Come and discover Portugal with us. Please like, subscribe and leave your comment. Your support and opinions are very important to us. Thank you. The monastery of Santa Maria de Flor da Rosa is located in the former parish of Flor da Rosa, in the municipality of Crato. It has been classified as a national monument since 1910. This monastery was founded by the Order of Knights of the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem, also known as the Knights Hospitaller, an order founded in 1048 in the city of Jerusalem next to a hospital that assisted pilgrims. Its arrival in Portugal occurred at the beginning of the 12th century, establishing headquarters in the Lesser de Waliu Monastery, after a donation made by Theresa, Countess of Portugal, or Afonso Henriques, between 1122 and 1130. In the description you can find the link to another video of ours about Lesser de Waliu. With the advance of the reconquest towards the south of the current Portuguese territory, donations multiplied and, at the end of the 12th century, the Hospitallers had already expanded their presence to the Tagus River. It was on the banks of this river that they built castles such as Belvir, which served as the order's vanguard and administrative post, and Amieira do Tejo. Its influence would extend even further south, reaching Veracruz Memlar. In 1336, the Priory of Portugal, the name by which the Hospitaller possessions in Portugal were called, became known as Priory of Crato, with its leader being Álvaro Gonçalves Pereira, father of the constable Nuno Álvares Pereira. The order's headquarters thus moved to Crato, with its spiritual centre located just over two kilometres away in Flor da Rosa, in a monastery whose foundation is shrouded by some doubts. There is uncertainty about the precise date of its foundation, which occurred in the first years of the second half of the 14th century, following the desire expressed by Álvaro González Pereira to institute a chapel near Crato. The most frequently mentioned year is 1356. Local tradition indicates that there was a Benedictine convent nearby that was abandoned after the invasion of this territory by Muslim forces. An image of Our Lady survived from this temple and was found in the area where the current monastery was built. The origins of the toponym Flor de Rosa, Flower of the Rose, are not entirely clear. It may correspond to an invocation of the international headquarters of the Hospitaller Order, located on the island of Rhodes in Greece, whose name may derive from the word rose, given the abundance of rosy stone in that location. The construction of the monastery of Flor de Rosa took place in two major stages, the medieval stage in the 14th and 15th centuries, in which the central core of the building and the church were built, and the Manueline and Renaissance stage in the 16th century, in which the monastic part was built. In medieval times, the first phase corresponded to the construction of a defensive square with machiculations with a tower on the southwest corner. In the next phase, two residential towers were added, corresponding to the palace area. In the third phase, the church was built, making use of the east side of the defensive square, as well as the third larger tower. Once the complex was built, the church was then finished with modillions and merlons were placed on the surrounding balcony. In the first half of the 15th century, the drainage of the surrounding land was incremented and three monumental fountains were built on the initiative of prior Enrique Castro in 1443. One of these fountains, the White Fountain, can be seen near the entrance to the monastery. 
It is topped by the Almeida's coat of arms and has a lintel containing a Gothic inscription with the Maltese cross, symbol of the Hospitallers. Through the various construction phases, it is clear that the functions attributed to this monument varied, from a more defensive structure at the beginning to a monastic space, including a residential component. The monastery of Santa Maria de Flor de Rosa is therefore, simultaneously, a palace for the residence of noblemen, a religious space and a fortification, which explains its peculiar and unique appearance in the Iberian context. In the 16th century, works were carried out here during the leadership of Grand Prior the Jogli Almeida, in accordance with Manueline taste and which had an impact on the cloister and crossing of the church, where this dignitary was buried. In the second quarter of the same century, Louis of Portugal, Duke of Beja and son of King Manuel I, decided to found a theology college here for 30 devotees. New rooms were added and parts of the building were altered in Renaissance style. Remaining examples from this period are the French windows, two of them with marble mullions in the centre, added to the towers on the south side, as well as an extension of the church's transept arm. There, a narthex was opened, accessible through a three-centred arch and a flight of stairs, which leads to the main portal of the church, which is flanked by fluted bases and columns, and topped by an architrave with volutes. The stylistic similarities with the portal of the Grasa church in Évora are many, leading to believe that both were designed by Miguel de Rude, who was the architect of the royal works of the Alentejo region at that time. The monastery's interior, currently divided between the exhibitions and visitable area and the facilities that are part of a hotel unit, reveals, like the exterior, its various periods of construction. On the ground floor, under the old medieval towers, we can now find the reception and a set of informative panels about the history and evolution of this national monument. The brick vaults that cover this space date back to the 16th century. In the centre of the complex stands the cloister, which is located in the area of the original central court of the medieval building, of which some Gothic doors still remain, such as the one that opens onto the church's nave. At that time, there would have been a balcony or veranda here, a hypothesis suggested by the presence of seal doors in the walls at the level of the current vault and by the holes in the wall on the south side. During the 16th century, the extensive construction campaign that took place here had a particular impact on this area of the building, resulting in its conversion into a cloister with two bays on each side. Here, the transition between two architectural styles is clearly evident. On the one hand, we have the Manueline style, which appears expressed in the OG arch frames of some doors, in the Solomonic columns and vaults. On the other, we have the Renaissance style, which appears as a final note of erudition, materialized in detail such as round arches supported by columns in the classic manner. The gallery's rib vaults, made of brick and with a typical Alentejo aspect, are supported by four walls divided into two three-centered arches on each side, which open onto the central courtyard. These arches are carved in marble and are based on columns and capitals made of the same material, the latter showing Mudeja influences, typical of Alentejo architecture from the 20s and 30s of the 16th century. Today, the Flor de Rosa monastery is inseparable from the figure of its founder, Álvaro González Pereira, who was, in his time, one of the most notable dignitaries of the Hospitaller Order in the fight against Muslims.
He distinguished himself for his participation in the decisive Battle of Rio Salado, fought on October 30, 1340, in the current province of Cadiz, Spain, at a time when he was already over 50 years old and his legacy assumed almost mythical proportions. Tradition indicates that before joining the battle, he made a detour to Veracruz Mermelar, from where he borrowed the relic of the True Cross, a supposed piece of the cross where Christ was crucified, that is kept there until today. The presence of such an important and powerful sacred relic was considered a key element in the victory of Christian forces over the Moors in that confrontation, which would mark a definitive turnaround in the so-called Reconquista of the Iberian Peninsula. In the church stands the tomb of this distinguished Prior Hospitaller, his profound connection to such a relevant event in the low Middle Ages as the Battle of Rio Salado would transform this temple into a pantheon of Alvar González Pereira. The church has a cruciform plan, with the arms of the transept being quite pronounced. On the walls we can see arcasolia that were destined to receive the tombs of hospitaller dignitaries. This temple would therefore have a planned function as a pantheon of the order, which it would only fulfill for its founder. The nave, chancel and transept are covered by pointed barrel vaults. The vault over the crossing is ribbed. This temple is almost devoid of decorative elements, having a dense overall appearance. It is lit through narrow openings that give it an atmosphere closer to Romanesque architecture. The sole decorative details are found in the imposts of some arches and in the attached columns of the portals, as well as in the corbels supporting a pointed arch. The vault was originally built with roughly shaped stone, slate and ceramic remains, forming a highly elastic agglomerate. It would also be whitewashed together with the walls. The vaulting that we can see today is made up of ashlars, corresponding to the reconstruction and restoration carried out between the 40s and 60s of the 20th century. The passage of the centuries left its mark on this monastery. The 1755 earthquake caused damage that led to the need for Peter III of Portugal, then Grand Prior of Crato, to order the execution of repairs. The palace buildings had been unoccupied since the early years of the 17th century, possibly following the annexation of Portugal by Spain in a region of the country that would be devastated by violent battles in the Restoration War that ensued. The definitive transfer of the assets of the Order of Malta, the name that the Hospitaller Order assumed from 1530 onwards, to the House of the Infantado, later abolished in 1834, worsened the state of abandonment into which the monastery fell. On January 17, 1897, an intense storm hit this region, causing the collapse of several structures in the monument, with a particular and dramatic impact on the church's apse. Part of the stonework was loaded into carts by the populace to build walls and houses. The tomb of Alvaro Gonçalves Spreira was moved to the parish church of Flor de Rosa, being placed in the side chapel built for this purpose. In 1940, on the initiative of engineer Eduardo Pacheco, complete reconstruction work began on the church's apse, including walls, vaults and floor, and on the convent premises affected by the storm. These works would take around 20 years to be completed. In the 1980s, new interventions were carried out with a view to the future conversion of the monastic parts of the complex into a guest house. The space was considered insufficient, leading to a profound redesign of the project. After a competition promoted by the Portuguese Institute of Architectural Heritage in 1989, the project by architect Jean-Louis Carril de Grasse was chosen. Construction of the Flor de Rosa Hotel then took place between 1990 and 1995.
In the 21st century, this monument became the home of the medieval sculpture nucleus of the National Museum of Ancient Art, which encompasses a set of stone sculptures with a Marian theme. Located in the rooms surrounding the cloister, it includes images created between the 15th and 17th centuries by sculptures from the Portuguese school, from the collection of Commander Ernesto de Villena at the National Museum of Ancient Art. The images of Our Lady, a cult venerated by the Order of St. John of Jerusalem, correspond to a chronological period that covers several significant centuries in the history of this monastery. Thank you for discovering Portugal with us. If you like the video, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel to follow our new releases.